So before I begin this review, I have to say that I'm not reviewing Persona 3 as an experience because it's phenomenal, but I am here to review Persona 3 Reload as a game. Second, this review will contain spoilers for Persona 3 FES, Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4, and Persona 3 Reload, and the only thing I can say to not spoil anything for you is I recommend playing this game because this game is an amazing experience and perhaps it will change your perspective about various topics of life. What I absolutely don't like about this game, there is no good endings, even if you try to, which is not good for someone who played Persona 3 FES or Persona 3 Portable. Yeah, there are links episodes with Shinji, Ken, Akihito, but none of those save Shinji, but they just unlock personas in the final event that you spend time with those characters. Unlike Portable, the player can save Shinji there if they play as Katane, the female protagonist, and I thought those linked episodes were as kind of replacement to fit Minato as a male protagonist, but they weren't. The only good thing you can do is saving Shidori in this game. But that's it. Also, when I read the title of this game, which is Persona 3 The Road, I thought at first the player can go back in time to change some events in the past that would affect the future. For example, the player go back in time and doesn't kill the 12 shadows. Or perhaps we can get the true message if you carry his father. Or perhaps we can tell the party member about Shuji true intention. There's so many options that a player can do to avoid losing Minato, or losing Shinji, or losing Mitsuru Favar. But before doing anything, I'm gonna try the rewind system and see what it does exactly. I mean, it's okay, I saved. Let's see what this does. But it's just a reload. I don't get it. What's the difference between a rewind and a reload? I can just save in a different slot and reload that slot. I thought at first this will affect the story or affect the outcome of Persona 3. For example, you go back in time and change some events that would affect the future. And ultimately, we'll get the good ending here. Now, that would be a myth. I guess there's no way to skip that training day, huh? But what about the message of this game? The Partial, death, and loss, man. As Nick stated, every living thing is destined to die. To live is to die, as he said. Whether it happens at young age or old, it's the same concept. Hence, we can still show these characters after several years experiencing these concepts. And for me personally, I would see it as the same message. But it would be less a bit, because now, perhaps we get married, they got their dream job, you know, so many things we can do. Second, difficulty. Before I talk about the difficulty, I have to be clear that Persona 3 The Road isn't an SMT game. Unlike Persona 3 FES, which personally I see it as the closest among the Persona games that are Atlas titled as SMT, to an actual SMT game experience. I have to remind you that I haven't played Persona 1 and 2, so perhaps they are harder than 3. I don't know about that. But I'm not here to compare Persona 3 Lolo to a SMT game. I'm here to tell you this game wasn't really challenging. On hard, which is the difficulty I played the new game on. That thanks to many conveniences that the game provides for the player. And I'm going to cut myself from the past before I know there is PRG in this game. This is still weird. To use this clock to fully heal yourself is making this game even easier now. Yeah, so far, this game is easier. The way you can shift is already easier. I can't judge this game if it is really easier overall. So far, yeah, it is easier. Like in the original, you couldn't control your party members. There was no shifting. There was no way to fully heal yourself HP and SP wise. And there was a fatigue system. The party members get tired and they miss more often than usual. So you have to switch between them, you know, when the other party members join, like Akihiko. Not to mention that you couldn't manually pick skills for your own personas. I hope there's gonna be something that balances this difficulty. I mean, sure, I'm playing on hard, and I'm not having a hard time. Like, sure, again, did I die? Yeah. But was that hard? Not really. That was medium experience for me. Just comparing this game to itself from the best. This experience is easy. I don't know like, how to describe that. It's not really demanding that much strategy. Like, what it took me there, it just snuffed souls, and I did it. It wasn't that bad. And hard should be, you know, hard. Again. I'm still at the beginning here. 
And the personas I have are still weak. I don't have uh, good personas that you end up having at random again. But you would vaporize a whole encounter of shadows. So yeah, that's my take about battle system. Do I like it? Of course, it looks cool. The all out attacks are good, stylish, greatly animated. Of course I like it. But I'm talking about the difficulty here. I'm not talking about the graphic wise or gameplay wise. I'm talking about the difficulty. Difficulty, this game on hard, it's not really hard. At least for now. Like the only thing that makes me now not continue exploring that I don't have SB. That's it. But SB can be refilled using this clock if I do have enough fragments. And I don't. Again, do I like this? Uh, yeah, of course. I love this game. Of course. That wouldn't make me like it less or something. Can I say this game's difficulty is the same as Persona 3 FES difficulty? No. The FES version was harder than this. For the reasons I mentioned. I don't know. Is it easy though? Is it really, really easy? No, of course not. I'm still playing on hard. I died. Of course, there's some hardship, but I'm hoping the battle system will be balanced. There gonna be some sort of hardship? I'm playing on hard, I should feel hardship. That comes from someone who played SMT games. So yeah, take this with a grain of salt, if you will. And I am sorry if I offended you. This is how I play games. I want the game to challenge me. Oh yeah, I was mildly challenged. Mildly though. Not really, really, oh my god, I can't beat anything here. Or, oh my god, I am dying so much. That's the hardship I didn't feel. If I'm gonna tell you about the SMT experience here. And it is a meme for a reason. If you play Nocturne on hard difficulty, and I'm talking about the origin by the way, but there's a, I don't remember the name of that demon, but it's called Prata. That Prata will kill you so many times on the tutorial segment until you get lucky, mostly, <laughs> and beat it. Yeah, that's how hard that hard was. And that's one of the organization that I don't like. Maybe there's gonna be something that balances this difficulty later on. I wanna actually be challenged. I wanna die a lot in this game. That's why I choose hard. I died once. I like this game. Of course I like it. That wouldn't change my mind about how much I like this game. I like Persona 3 before challenge. I like Persona 3 because of the story. Because of the message it has. And because of the life lessons it taught me. I'm pretty sure at some point of this nostalgia trip I will show all of that. The challenge is just an optional thing. I can just now go and select Beast World. It's okay. That wouldn't change anything. So that's it for now. I'm sorry again, guys. That was a really weird way to say it, but this is how I feel. Thank you for listening. Of course, Fear G works as like almighty damage, which means it works regardless if the enemy is resistant, immune, or reflect that type of damage. And that made many battles, including next fight, not changing at all. Did you miss me? Yeah, of course I miss you too, please. Now it's our turn! Good care! Abba, Virgi, ignore resistances. Good job, there you go. The skill cards can be used in this game, unlike Persona 3 FES. And as I mentioned, you can pick the skill for your Persona manually in this game, unlike FES. And you can easily break the game if you really want. So here's my plan. I'm gonna show it to you now. I'm gonna replace the multi-target because he doesn't have any multi-target now. With a single boost. Good. Now this one, look at this one. Critical, critical. One four. More critical. More critical. Damage up. Damage up. And more damage up. This is what I call a perfect persona. But obviously it needs assistance, like a shard skill. And another person. But let's try it. Let's test it. I wanna see how ridiculous the damage is. Though. Let's see. Oh my god, what care? Oh my god. I am sorry guys. I am really sorry man. Yep, this is yep. Yeah. What can I say? So you can easily break this game if you want. And I'm glad I didn't do that in the beginning. Now Twilight Chest in this game also helped to lessen the difficulty even further. For example, I got a medium wind spell card on floor 18, which means early game. I never used it, 
But if I use it, it can triple your eyes if I fight for early game. Since normal shadows don't really have immunities but resistances at first. I have 10, it's okay. But I'm gonna stop at 7. Just in case. Oh my god! Garuda at your teeth? Wow! That's a medium wind skill. I mean, I know it's from a twilight chest, but still. Who can this game also helps making the experience easier? From buffing the party to debuffing the entire floor with distress, which makes hitting critical is more likely to happen. Not only that, but she tells you the enemy affinities. So from the second turn onward, it's not a trial error fight anymore. Also, her theology is very from full revival to full heal SP, HP, charge, and focus, which makes the player relies on the clock even less. Even though in my case, I never use the clock ever in new game. Now let me talk about the characteristic, which are passive effects that your team member get if you spend time with them, gardening, watching DVDs reading books with them or cooking with them those characteristics make the game easier if you know how to utilize them like equipping certain items that enhances that characteristic for example i equipped an accessory to jump that increases critical which is called aptibuble in this game and his characteristic increases the likelihood of landing a critical while increasing the critical damage but in July, Monad doors become available for the player, so they can change themselves if they want to, since they are optional. The rewards with these Monad door are materials and gems the player needs to craft items in the antique shop. Each segment of each block usually has three enemies that can be fought, and they can be farmed if the player wants. The first time you fight the boss, it would be the hardest, since the player doesn't know the enemy weaknesses until they use for analysis, which is the focus skill, or be lucky to hit the enemy with their weaknesses. But from the second fight onward, again, it's no more guessing, it will be easier. I wish these enemies can switch their affinities around to keep the player guessing, to make the fights less predictable, but they are predictable sadly. Unlike them, there are monad passages, which are unique and have enemies that can only be fought once. So I like the Manad passages. In July, great clocks can spawn for the player, so the player can give experience to two teammates, and we need to add those two party members into a party, so we can get to the level the great clock set. This great clock makes leveling up your under level party member more convenient to achieve. However, this great clock spawn after the player use certain amount of twilight fragments, and they're not few. Also, there's a limit to level up your team members, which is 13. So they're not that broken. Greedy shadows become available in September and the player can use them to gain massive experience and many items. Later on, when Fuka lands starter search, the player can tell her to use it to skip the chase altogether. These greedy shadows have high HP, but they are easy to take down. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Good. Of course, difficulty is not about the fights and battles in this game only, but about social links as well. For the social links in this game, there are jobs, unlike the FES, that help the player to gain money and to increase their social stats, charm, academics, or courage. So maxing out your social stats in this game is easier than FES. And I actually managed to max all of my social stats in a new game, which I found odd. Later on, you can go alone with Koromaro, to increase a random social link by 3 points. Also, later in November, you get a chance to buy a link from the club to increase an established social link by 2 points, which makes maxing social links even easier. We can also invite you to do that on weekends or off days to go with them, and if you fill the option, you can give the present to them to fix the fail, I think. Or you can get double whammy like I did. I don't know if the reverse card exists in this game like Persona 3 FAS, which happens if you pick the bad choice while socializing. But in my experience with Persona 3 Reload, I have never had reverse card while socializing. All of what I mentioned made social links in this game easier to max, and for me, I managed to max 11 social links, not counting Fool, Judgment, and Death, which are auto in this game. To summarize the difficulty of this game in one word, is convenient. Unlike Persona 3 FES. Third, 
There is no female main character or cut in her out in this game, which I wish she was included like Persona 3 the Portable, but she is not present in this game. Over there's a mod for the PC version, so I'm waiting for it, so I can play as Katana. Fourth, the rescue or Elizabeth episode isn't present yet, even after 15 years, which is I said in the final part of the nostalgia trip that Minato is not dead, and Elizabeth is trying to save him, which was mentioned by Margaret, in Persona 4, after the player defeats her, and Persona 4 came out in 2008. Now we're in 2024, and the Elizabeth episode of the rescue has it been made yet. Neutral. First, I'm gonna talk about the OSTs of Reload and FES, and tell you what is better for me as a person. Now this is subjective, but I'm gonna tell you what is more emotional, what is good, what is not good, what OST I think it should stay as the original, what OST I think it should be as the reload version, and you can watch this video to know my thoughts about each one of these OSTs. Graphics are good, and animation and battle are stylish, but I find this game has so many black screens to hide the lack of animation in its event. Also in some aspects you see that some characters are waiting for trigger to move in in the cutscene and that impacts the emerger negatively. I wish the map of each location was larger than the game was shown to a player and you can see the characters move in to the cutscene naturally which would enhance the emerger. Atlas added a variety of activities that can be done in Tatras like the Monad doors and Monad messages that I talked about. Rescue missions and saving cats. I am gonna talk about the rescue missions and saving cats now. What I want to say about them, that they are really repetitive and don't have any depth to them. Elizabeth tells you the range, Fuka tells you the exact floor. If you already explored the floor beforehand, you find the missing person, rinse and repeat. I wish they added shadows surrounding these victims that the player has to fight in order to rescue the missing person, or they could add a timer which starts when the battle begins to add extra layer of challenge to these rescue missions. But sadly, these rescue missions don't have any kind of challenge. The only thing the player needs to do is just to make sure to arrive the floor that missing people are on before the deadline, and that's it. The cats are also the same, but unlike people, they give the player fragments immediately, making collecting toilet fragments even easier to open toilet chests. Dark Zone is a risky floor that has higher chance for the reaper to spawn on it, but as an exchange for that risk, a toilet fragment as crystallized items are guaranteed to be on that floor. So it's a balanced floor. I would say. The player can't interact with their party members individually in Tartarus like FES. Obviously I'm talking about inside Tartarus itself, not at the entrance. However, there are special dialogues if the player makes certain characters as a party. The original sees. Well, I'm not one of the original, but you know. Let's see if we have any special dialogue. Any special dialogue, guys? Please. The three of us teaming up again certainly brings back memories. Ah. Tell me about it. Those days? We just kept fighting and fighting day after day. All I remember is Aki getting too worked up and rushing into danger on his own. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy I did this one. Yes. Also, let me talk about the voice acting. Now, before I talk about that, I have to clarify that I played the game with English voices. First, Alex Lee, who voiced Minato, Pharos, Ryuji, and Nex Avatar. This was a great voice acting. If Minato exists in real life, this is how I would imagine him sound like. A pathetic. At Ryuji, he sounded more charismatic, which fits Ryuji personality since he's a youth of the world and he likes to date girls. So I get no criticism for this amazing voice acting. And it never lessens the emergence and made me question myself if this character exists in real life. Would they sound like this? There's two. Here's your chance to attack. Weren't you looking for Miss President too? I was doing the same thing. Some guy asked me to find her. He said if I didn't, the class trip might get cancelled. In any case, looks like I found you. Mitsuru kirijo -san. Second, Havel Gonzalez, who voiced Yukari. I don't know how to say this, but the voice actress is too nice for Yukari character. And no, I'm not saying Yukari is a bad character or anything, or should sound it as an evil character, but she's not that nice either. I think the voice acting would be better if it was playful, teasing, and sometimes has rude personality like Yukari. Sadly, the voice actress, or perhaps the directing for the voice acting, didn't execute well. 
So yeah, Yukari has character impacted by merging a bit and made me question if Yukari exists in real life, would she sound like this? And I always answer the question by no. Maybe at the end of the game, after Yukari's watch her father's true message video, I would believe it. But before, no, sorry. Hold on. Before we go on, I'd like to ask Kirijo senpai something. Really? In front of us, Yukari? I know I'm not the only one thinking this. So much has been happening lately. I feel like I've just been getting dragged along without really understanding anything. But now, I want answers. So I'm gonna ask you straight out. You've been hiding something from us, haven't you, Senpai? You're always acting like you don't know anything about the Dark Hour or Tartarus. But they're connected to that accident 10 years ago, aren't they? Fair, Zeno Robinson, who voiced Jumper. This voice actor is phenomenal and really illustrated variety of emotion, which I would believe Jumper would say in the same way if he exists in the real life. From sad, anger, happy, crying, this is an amazing voice actor and really enhanced the immersion for me. Thank you. I did nothing for you, Jumper. I'm sorry. I did nothing for you, too. Meaningless. Burn in hell! You won't get away with that! I... I've... I've never been so happy in my entire life. Yeah, get out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jumper. Fourth, Alejandro Saab, who voiced Akihiko. Let me begin this by saying the voice actor illustrated variety of emotion. And of course, we know how to make them sound realistic or believable for me. However, the voice doesn't fit Akihiko as a character at all. I am sorry, but Akihiko is 17 years old in Persona 3 time die. And the voice is too deep for a 17 years old high schooler. I thought if I was strong enough, I could protect anyone. But I was wrong. And now you're gone too. God, it's like the world is laughing at me. I knew what we were getting into. I knew we were putting our lives on the line. But I was so focused on fighting that I didn't see anything else. I am sorry, I can't go. It doesn't matter how strong I was. Look what happened! Me too, I can't go. I couldn't do anything. Fifth, Allegra Clark, who voiced Mitsuro. Sadly, this one is the same as Alejandro Sam. He knows how to illustrate variety of emotions, however, the voice sounds too mature for a 17 years old high schooler girl like Mitsuro. I think it would be better if the voice sounded younger, who tries to act as a mature, like Mitsuro, not actually mature. <laughs> once made a promise. He swore he would atone for putting our generation in danger even if it cost him his life. But I... I wanted him to live. I became a Persona user so I could protect him. I am so not so. I wish I could have shared anything for you, but I couldn't. Six, Susie Young. Who voice Fuka. This is a phenomenal voice acting too. If Fuka exists in real life, this is how I would imagine her sound like. No critiques here at all. Thanks, Susie, for this amazing voice acting. Sorry if my room smells like food. That's okay, Fuka! It's because I taste test my cooking in here every once in a while. 
I don't really know how my room smells anymore because I'm so used to it. Um, uh, did you know that out of our five senses, smell is the one that adapts the fastest, so, uh... <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's okay, Fuka, I love you! Are you nervous? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, um... Yeah? This is the first time I've ever invited a boy to my room. So yes, I am honored. We still have time, right? Of course. Seven. Shinya Takahashi, who voiced Koromaru. I would say this voice acting was 99% believable for me. Just once when I heard Koromaru saying well, or so I heard it. That broke my immersion a little bit. <laughs> Good job, Koromaru. What a stunt. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he actually said wow, bro. <laughs> yes. It, Don and Bennett, who voiced Igus. And since this is Igus, I'm going to talk about this in more detail than the previous ones. First, let me say that this voice actress knows how to sound robotic, which fits Igus. And she can illustrate emotion robotically, like I would imagine Igus would. Hence, this is my criticism about the end of the game. When Mirato is sleeping on August then, which unlike the original, she doesn't gradually sound more human in each line. Maybe that was a misdirection on the voice acting, but that is the only criticism I have about the voice acting regarding Igus, is she doesn't sound more human the more lines she speaks. Hence, all of this scene was better voice acted, or perhaps voice directed, in the original than Persona 3 Reload. Admit, I'm finally noticing the beauty of spring. It's wonderful. And yet, without exception, each and every season will come to an end. We fought side by side. We faced the world's end. And now, I'm finally beginning to understand what it was I'd been searching for. I always wondered what it really meant to live. Now I think it's following your heart, fighting for what you can change, yeah. and accepting the things you can't. Thank you, I guess. Nothing on this earth lasts forever. Nothing, I know. That was still said. One day fizzle out. That holds true for all of us. And as soon as you come to terms with it, you realize something. You see what really matters. And find out what it is that gives your life meaning. When I learned that I wasn't strong enough, I was torn by it. <laughs> now heart, I understand Captain. why. Protecting others is the duty I was given. But to me, it was more than an obligation. At some point, it became something I wanted to do for correct, myself. But, uh, I Once I decided to try and prevent the fall, something inside me clicked. When I thought about how I might never see you again, that's when I first <sighs> understood. What mattered to me the most, what I want, is to protect you from now until the end of time. I want to stay by your side, and I know I'm not the only one out there who could do this. But still, I want to, because I'm positive. If I do it for you, then nothing's a waste. My life will have meaning. So, thank you. Sorry, what's gotten into me? It's good, I finally found a reason to live. So why am I... They're here. Metal, I'm sorry. I see it now. I have friends. We support each other through thick and thin. Yes. Not everything needs to be for some greater purpose. Just caring about someone can be enough. I agree, I That's guess. That's all we need to give our lives meaning. Yes, I agree. As for me, I found my path. And that's to protect you with my life. Thank you so much for everything. <sighs> you must be tired. Yeah. Go ahead and rest now. I'll be right here. I won't be going anywhere. In a moment, the others will be joining us. The wind feels so nice. This is my first time experiencing spring. But this season will eventually pass. After fighting alongside you and facing the world's end, I finally began to understand what it means to live. Thinking for yourself. 
not running away, accepting the inevitable. All things eventually come to an end. Every living thing will one day disappear. Only by accepting this can one discover what they truly want, what the meaning of their life will be. I understand now why I was so tormented by my lack of strength. Protecting others became more than just an order I had to obey. I wanted to do it for my own reasons. I realized this once I decided to try and prevent the fall. When I thought I might never see you again, something else became clear to me. What I wanted most. And so, I made up my mind. I decided that I would continue to protect you. I want to be your strength. I know I'm not the only one who can do this, but that's okay. <laughs> my life will be worth living if it's for this reason. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. What am I doing? I understand now. So I should be happy. Everyone. I realize now that I have friends as well. You don't have to save the world to find meaning in life. Sometimes, all you need is something simple, like someone to take care of. I'll keep on living no matter what, so that I can protect you. Thank you for everything. You must be tired. Please, get some rest. I'll stay right here with you. Soon. All your friends will be here by your side. Now, Justine Lee will voice Ken. This was a good voice acting. It's never broke my immersion. Sorry for making you come all the way up here. Well... Would you have a practice match with me? Right here, right now. I, I trained in secret for a long time. So I could avenge my mom's death. I promised that I'd see this through to the end. I have to make good on that. I had no chance. At least, now I know where I stand compared to you. I'm alright. But I am glad I decided to use toy weapon. I'm still your team member, man. I have to care about you, buddy. So would you mind if I challenged you again sometime? Yes. Thank you. I'll get closer to beating you. Just wait. Yes. Tim, Justice Locum, who voiced Shinji. This is a good voice acting as well, and it fits Shinji personality so well, and he illustrated a variety of emotions which never impacted my immersion negatively. Do it. I won't stop you. You're right. I just wanted to forget. That's why I left everyone behind. And tried to use the drugs to suppress my power. No matter what I do, I always end up back here. You bastard. What'd you say? Mata. What? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> There's no one. Shinji, loyal to the end. There you go. The Kai and Jin voice actors, Damon Mills and Chris Hackney, did an amazing job to portray misguided characters, and I love their voice acting. It made me actually feel like I was interacting with people who misunderstood life or perhaps death greatly. The only voice actress, Merit Layton, did a phenomenal job as a character who lost hope and found it again by love. The transformation in her emotion is amazing. No critics here at all. Thank you. My. Protecting your would-be murderer? This may be a bit ill-timed, but no matter. It matters not whose life I take first. You're both destined to perish anyway. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> Oh no! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! <laughs> oh no! Minato! Run away, Minato! <laughs> the guy I lost it, man! <laughs> What's the point in telling you? It'll all be over soon. Sorry, no can do. <laughs> There's no way Nyx could be stopped by the likes of you, but I ain't about to let you get into Kaya's way. That's the point! He ain't gonna live much longer either way. So we gotta see it through to the end. This is Takaya's wish. So I'm not backing down. Out of the way. You're blocking my view. Move. What do you want? This isn't where I belong. I've known that from the start. Takaya was right. You're all just a nuisance. This pain. 
It's nothing compared to the suffering I'm feeling inside. Why? Why won't you leave me alone? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Come on! It hurts. I can't breathe. No. I'm scared. Shuji voice actor Jake Green did a great job portraying a character who has hidden agenda and was using seas to achieve his delusional idea of war. Also, I hate Shuji by the way. <sighs> this guy. This guy. I said hello to everyone so far, but to you, hell. So, this is our new guest. Good evening. My name is Shuji Ikutsuki. I'm the chairman of the board for your school. Yeah, your name is hard. I'm gonna call you Shuji. Ikutsuki. Hard to say, isn't it? Yep. That's why I don't like introducing myself. Even I get tongue-tied sometimes. Excellent deduction, Kirijo-kun. Unfortunately, you're too little too late. Goodbye, Shuji! See you next fall, buddy! Yes. Yes, I was chosen. I'm going to be the god of the new world! No, you won't. <laughs> what a shame. I was so close. <laughs> Good riddance! Elizabeth voice actress is the same as the original. Tara Black. Do I really need to see anything more? She's amazing. With one of your world's exquisite treasures, right out of the blue. <laughs> it makes sport of water, a precious resource, and the very foundation of life. Such a sinful form of art. Fortunately, I anticipated this <laughs> and brought a hefty sum of coins. Oh my god, this is gonna be amazing. <laughs> 2,000 of your 500 yen coins, to be exact. Oh my god. I shall make an opening bid of 1 million yen. Oh, what a pity. I had hoped to become part of the scene. <laughs> oh my god, she's amazing. Woo! Yeah, it was! It was! I am happy now! Eager voice actor Craig Fortune did a great job portraying Eager. Thank you. There's no need to worry. Yes. This isn't the afterlife. You're still very much alive. For now. Do you remember what I once told you? Yes. How the strength of your social links will determine your potential. Yeah, I know, Igor. Listen. Can you hear their many voices? Ah, oh, yeah, I do. Each one's power is faint, yet they all reach out to you. Can you feel them? Of course. My God. Yuri Lolafo did a great job portraying Yukari's father, especially when he was talking to his daughter that he would never see again. That was beautifully voice acted. Thank you. I have just one request. Whoever finds this, please give my daughter Yukari this message. Uh -huh. I know I promised I'd be home soon, and I'm sorry to break that promise, but I want you to know, as your father, I was never happier in my life than when I was with you. This really is my dad. Yes. I love you, Yukari. Please, take care of yourself. See you, Yukari. Killing Molds is amazing too, portraying the bully who became Fuka friend later on, Natsuke. I never impacted my emerging negatively. That would make me question if my character is trying to act as bully. The traveler actually is a bully, and that takes an experience. So then, I pretended to take a picture with my cell phone, and she totally freaked out and started crying. It was like they caught her red-handed or something. You should have seen the look on her face. It was priceless. I've never laughed so hard in all my life. <laughs> uh. You... Yeah... Uka! 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 I... And there is a Yuto and Suzanne Blexley did phenomenal job voice acting the old couple which one of the special social links for me in this game. I'd like to thank both of them 
or giving these sweet grandparents the opportunity we deserve. Well, well, look who it is. It's been a while. Hello, guys. You've grown so much since the last time I saw you. I'm glad, guys. Now, now, dear. They don't grow that fast. <laughs> what must have happened is that we shrank. Isn't that right? No, you look gorgeous. As well as. Was. Oh, 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 is that how it is? Looks like you got one over on me. <laughs> Say. Yes? Y you know our old shop here, uh, Bookworms? I'm thinking it's due for a makeover. Yeah. Something fresh, avant garde. I can't let Gekku Khan's new school building hog the spotlight. Speaking of the new school building, they've decided to replant the persimmon tree. I'm good at it. It'll be moved to a special location on a hill overlooking the whole campus. Hero is my favorite character already before playing the old version, thanks to Dave FAS and Persona 4. But with the perfect voice acting Kitty Baskin gave to her, now I love Hero even more as a character. Thank you. The president wants to speak with me? D don't tell me she thinks I stole the money too. Y yes, you're right. She'll help us, won't she? Um, shall we head to the student council room then? Well, Senpai has been... Wait, what? 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 Can you believe I went to the faculty office and said all that? I even surprised myself a bit. This whole thing is just... <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I am happy too. Grace Law did phenomenal job playing Mako, and I never even for a second I thought I was talking back to a shark. Thank you. I'm kind of hungry. <gasps> Let's go out to eat. Yes, takoyaki. Aww, but I want Wild Duck Burger. Aww. I want to try the new frog burger they have. They talked to me about why they were getting divorced. Yes. It was sad. But I listened to the whole thing. Did I do good? Of course! Good girl! There you go! You're a good girl, Miko! <laughs> Thank you! Ah. But... They said not to worry... Because they would love me no matter what! Patrick Sides did phenomenal job portraying Tanaka, a character who lost trust in society but get it again thanks to Minato! My schedule is so terribly packed... I don't usually have time for your average Joe, you know? I know! Alright! Let's add a new word to our vocabulary today. Repeat after me. Scam, scam, scam. Placebo. Hmm. The stress is on the middle syllable. <laughs> Very good. You're feigning interest well. A placebo is a pretend pill. Basically, it's a medicine to give you peace of mind. Imagine this. A supplement to eliminate those unsightly love handles without lifting a finger. Errol LeBlanc voice fits the old monk really well. And this is what I would expect the old monk would sound like if he exists in the real life. My son's still a good for nothing punk, and my wife is frigid as usual. <sighs> She's like an old witch. What do you want? I'm on the phone! Hey, don't write this down, right? <laughs> well, he wrote it down. <laughs> Lots happened, but I apologized a thousand times, and I worked to make things right. Yes. I guess you could say we fell in love all over again. I'm glad you did. I realized. Yeah. Instead of holding on to my pride, I needed to just suck it up and apologize. <laughs> It's all thanks to you. Ah, you don't have to thank me, man. Akinari is the best social link for me in this game already before playing Reload version. But I would like to thank Lucia Dodge who perfected Akinari's personality. Thank you very much for doing this amazing voice acting. Any day now, I'm going to die. Yeah, I know. I know. I have an incurable hereditary disease. Yeah. I don't know. Unless you're in my situation, you can't understand how I feel. I am sorry, Kanari. But I prefer it that way. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. What a good guy. What a good guy. There are no platitudes to stave off death. You are my hero, man. Leon Bryan, who voiced Akihiko in the Persona 3 FES, is now voice acting Kurosawa. And his voice acting is amazing. I see you two are together again today. No, I'm just helping control the area. 
You might have noticed already, but the city's been feeling a little different lately. At any rate, this is perfect timing. There's something I've been wanting to ask you. My old Mismo. Recently, your friend here has been bothering me about my work. Oh, thinking of becoming a police officer? I think Cindy Robertson is the voice actress for Akinari's mother, since this wasn't included in the Behind the Voice site. But I have to give you my most thanks for that phenomenal emotional voice acting you did, portraying a grieving mother who will never see her son again. Thank you very much. He was almost an adult, but he never made it. The doctors detected it when he was born. They knew he wouldn't live to see adulthood. He said something to me near the end. I'm sorry to have brought so much pain into your life, Mother. Oh my god, that is bad, man. Huh? I'm glad that I was born into this world. Thanks to Benito. though. I'm glad to have been your son. Thank you for the life you've given me. I'm glad he said that. He suffered so much, and yet he still said that to me. Yeah. Akinari brought me so much happiness too. I'm glad. Feeling his warmth as I carried him in my arms after he was born. Those tiny hands. <laughs> that first smile. I'm glad. Now, I'm so alone. And there's nothing I can do. I'm gonna say what I just said. You're not alone. You're not alone. Never. I my boy gave me so much. Yeah, you should be proud of him. I'll eat the finest foods. Visit the most exotic places. I'll do everything. Absolutely everything that Akinari couldn't. Yeah, for him. Of course, the rest of the voice actors did their best as well. But it's either their lines were too few for me to tell their voice acting, or I have it back their social links. Emerging was it impacted negatively that much, however it's too far from perfect immersive persona free experience. And that thanks to the following. There's no sad emotional OST that plays after tragedies, which this game is full of. For example, when Shinji dies, you return to a dorm for this OST to be played. I'm just gonna talk to everyone and I'm gonna end the video. I'm not in the mood to play. I speculate. And that breaks the immersion at best and max the tragedies you have experienced as a player at work. I wish there was a special emotional OST that can be used for a week in the dorm exclusively to illustrate the serious situation the characters are experiencing, but there wasn't. As I mentioned before, some voice actors or actresses weren't ever fit with characters they try to portray or there was a misdirection on the voice acting and that lessened the immersion when these characters talk. Memories of you, the Reload Virgin to be specific wasn't emotional at all. And on top of that, the cinematic scene with Argus along with Argus sound robotic most of the scene made the whole ending worse than the original. And I already showed the difference in the Argus segment. This is what I absolutely like about this game. I really like that they added the linked episodes, studying groups, characteristics events, which added personality to the character and actually made me change or confirm my perspectives about them. I really like the graphics of this game, and the animation in battle, they look amazing. All auto attacks are stylish, and give more personalities to my characters. I said this once in the comment, but I wish this game gets a remake in the future using Persona 5 engine, and it did. I like the voice acting in general, giving personality to the character, which wasn't present for social links in FES version. I like the hard item usage in this game, which makes the player try a variety of personas, so they can get these special items. In conclusion, this game is beautiful and good, and it replaced the nostalgia I had for some parts and failed to replace it in some others, like the ending. When I remember the ending, I will remember the FES ending, not the reloads. But when I remember talking to Jihiro, Old Couple, or Akinari, I will remember the reload. Challenge wise, this game isn't that challenging. And the only two fights are actually challenging the Reaper and the Velvet Room Resident, like usual. And that thanks to what I mentioned before about the difficulty. Those are my thoughts about this beautiful game. And I hope I was thorough enough 
to give this game what it deserves. Thank you for watching.